can get a report out of this that reflects at least using our data the kind of information that you would like to see on your campus. Anybody, any volunteers? Well, I have one, but okay. I don't know if it's possible. Let's see. Uh, I have a, a course where I have three sections. Yes. All three sections have less than 10 students in. So I would like to merge a couple of those sections, but I need to know if the students have the, uh, in their schedule that a lot of time available so I can merge it and tell them this is the new section we're going to be registering. Okay. All right. They can do that. Yeah, they, yes. the registrar's yeah. office, has, yeah. they have access to the school. So they, they are a super user and they can they have the training and skills yeah, yeah, to be able way. to do this. So they, they will call us um, if they have a problem. Or if the data doesn't look right, okay. they'll they'll call. But, okay. Yeah, yes. but they they can do this on their own, which is the great thing about the tool, because oh, yeah. that's what allows people to control it and manage it in the way that works best for their office. Our registrar's office actually is one of our best users in campus. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, going back to your. Um, to your request on that is um, we talk about logic behind it and I'm going to put it up. So you have three sessions of students of a course each year. So what I do is I create a base report with the three sessions of students in it. And I create another general report to show all the schedule in the campus of the you know of the students, you know, what's their mm -hmm. course schedule and I filter against each other. Right. And then they'll give me the, the final the final. Uh, we're looking for courses with a uh, section with less than 10, you said, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 This is our equivalent of Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> That brings up a question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what percentage of your entire users do you believe have the knowledge to be able to do this? You know, the, uh, the main offices of the registrar, enrollment management, budget, um, a few other offices uh, in, the, in the provost area, I would say there's probably less than 10 offices, but they're important offices. Um, have what we call a super user, somebody who 
has some technology skills or is a good analyst, because you, you know, you need, it doesn't have to be technical, but they have to have analytic skills, and they, they also have to have the, the desire. So though there's probably about eight or 10 offices that have um, a one person who really, really gets it and really knows this and is doing this every day. It's not the type of thing that you could do once a month. 10 people. About 10 people, which 10 offices, 10 people, give or take. And that's what. How many employees does Neiman College have? Well, um, you know, it's about, we have a you know, good number of faculty, but this is really oriented towards administration. And so in that category, it's probably, um, you know, maybe I would say about 800. Of, uh, so 10 out of 800. Excuse me? 10 out 10, of 800. Yeah, but. Um, uh, the right time, you know, because they're they're driving critical information for enrollment advancement or the registrar or budget. So, and, you know. And, yeah, and it's not only that. Even though when you say that it's ten departments in, in a college, and you have like maybe one person that's dedicated, like you said, to this one thing, if when you have too many hands on it, it gets confusing, and then that's where the numbers get lost too. Right. If you have too many people, so that's why it's always good to have either one or two people just dedicated just to this. Mm -hmm. So that things don't get lost. Yes, that's We're a good point. Constantly changing. I mean, you know, but so, then, so that's understandable. Right, and then there's the level of people that have a particular issue that come to us because they deal with there's a reporting need or an accreditation issue, and they're working with institutional research, and they're working with this data to drive some needed reports. Um, and then there's um, the type of user that just needs to log in and see the report because they've already worked with us. So I would say that there's you know, also different levels of users and different, like the report that Lee showed earlier, that would be for a dean or for a chair of a department to see the threshold of less than 10 in a particular course. They don't need to have any skills in using the tool because the report was developed for them. So they just have to log in. So those are the kinds of, uh, and the idea here is to make it as available based on user needs and to make it easy for people. And that's what we've tried to do with this. And there's still some refining to do, as I mentioned before. Going forward, part of what we need to do is simplify and, and make it more visual and more graphical. Um, and uh, part of that will be done when we upgrade to the next version. For example, um, the version we have doesn't have a map-based view. The next version does. So for example, it would be nice for admissions to be able to see where their admits are from, from the, on a map. We know where they're from. We know the region they come from. We know their zip codes. And we have mapped it. But within the tool to be able to map it would be a nice thing. And that way they can focus, in some ways, they can focus recruitment efforts. They know that they're getting a, a good number of people from a particular zip code or from a particular school. They can work with that school, perhaps to a greater degree, to attract students. And typically, as you know, when it comes to recruitment of students, it often has to do with the school guidance counselor or the college counselor. So I have some technical But this is the, the way that we often work with users, is there's a particular need, a particular crisis, a particular problem, get together in a room and just throw up ideas like you have identified and begin to play with the data and then refine it. Because it could be that there's a data element that is the wrong one or that there's a more refined data element. There's some nuances in the data. So just by pulling this together and looking at reports, one of the things that we saw, for example, is in the implementation of a new system that um, uh, students weren't fully registered or they didn't have their immunization records complete and so they weren't allowed to register. So we were able to use that robocalling system um, <coughs> to kind of narrow down where was the problem with all the thousands of students that were unable to complete their registration. You were able to segment them by the nature of the problem. And so that's another use for this type of, of tool. It's to address an immediate issue as well as deal with long-term issues. OK. All right. So I have those reports and I'm going to explain. Okay. So the first one I pick up is three courses. 
for the um, coming semester, when the spring 2015. That's why you see the main factor. That's our way to call spring 2015. And uh, I want to know the registered students less than 10 people. So this is the list of uh, um, students information that I got. But basically, what I mean is, is this is the most important role. The, the column here is a student ID, right? because I need to pick up against two report against a common ground of the two or the student ID. So I create this report, this is my base report, and many other reports, by the way, uh, that has the way you think about the characters that um, one report filter on the data and the other ones. Um, so after I did this, this is my base, and I'm going to create my general report, like the final report you want to know, is what's the schedule for these 10 students. Um, so in, the, in this report, what I did is, uh, I still pick up the same thing as with the coming semester, and I pick against to the, the point I is equals to the report. This is the previous month I showed to you. And I say the same. So the MYD has matched the dump. Now I'm giving the final report um, about their student schedules. So you can see the first student has class on Monday, mon on Friday, Monday, and Wednesday, and that's the business schedule. So I'll give you an idea you know, how you want to merge course and you want to hands on. Great. It took about 10 minutes, but not bad, right? <laughs> Good. Thank you, Leah. So, um, any questions that you have or thoughts about this? Does it make sense? These types of tools? And when you begin to use them not only for addressing reporting issues, but move beyond that to be able to, to uh, deal with problems uh, concerns on the campus, improve retention, improve graduation rates, figure out when and where to intervene with students at the appropriate moment, given the fact that you may be like us. We don't have a lot of resources that allow us to work with students at the appropriate moment. So when would it be appropriate for us, for example, if, if somebody is on probation and the likelihood that uh, if they're on probation, they uh, may be a retention risk. So when would we intervene and how do we know that that intervention worked and what type of intervention would work? So measuring all of those things and being able to assess that if we can speak to people in their first semester after probation early and let them know what their status is and give them some guidance and give them some assistance, um, maybe that will help them. And you know, we work uh, in an environment where, as I mentioned before, students tend to be older, they tend to be working, it's a part-time uh, school, it's not residential. And so um, many students do not complete their degree because of the fact that they're working um, in a four-year period, sometimes six years. Not necessarily a bad thing for people to stop out, but we want them to continue their education either at Lehman or somewhere else because we want them to complete their degree at the end of the day. Um, and that's the most important thing for us. So having a positive experience um, in, with the school, with knowing that the administration is there to support them and wants to be helpful, um, those are important things. And you mentioned robocalling. Um, while it seems impersonal, getting a message saying, please come into our office or please follow up with this, students actually like it. It's, it's our experience anecdotally that they appreciate getting some sort of reminder and we are also looking at a, um, we talked about text messaging earlier, we're looking at a mobile app because most students, right, they live on their devices. And so we're looking at a mobile app that has um, some of the information from the student information system, some of the learning management tools, um, some personal information about them, but also allows us to message students. So we could do a push notification through the app that would be for a group of students, say all freshmen, or it could be for me as an individual saying that I need to come into the financial aid office, for example. So it could be an individual or a group notification that could come through this. So there's lots of ways to reach people and also integrate their experience on one device and one application. So um, other questions that you have? Okay, well, we uh, very much appreciate your patience and courtesy. I uh, want to thank you very much for your time. We're available um, if you, um, as you go back and begin to plan 
your own activities um, and you want us to be a resource, you can speak to Lee or myself. Um, don't uh, hesitate to call us. We'll give you our information through HEPs. Um, and let us know how you're doing and maybe uh, we hope that this is something that helped you in your journey and we appreciate learning from you as well. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Would it be necessary to have another session for questions and answers? No? I think no? we got yeah, through the session. Yeah. I during the session, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so gracias for this interesting discussion, and thank you to our speakers this morning for sharing this, their expertise and experiences. There are, the presentation and the video for this event will be uploaded at the HEDS website and YouTube channel, so you can review, review it or share it with your colleagues later. Soon you will be receiving an email with the links for access. Finally, thank you all for accepting this HEDS invitation to participate in this event. We hope you can benefit tremendously from the resources and the networking opportunities. Once again, gracias, thanks, and enjoy your long weekend.